This is the back and forth robot Mark II. It has three obstacle detecting switches at the back, three obstacle detecting switches at the front, two batteries. Each battery is six volts, but they're combined in such a way that they provide double the capacity as opposed to combined in a way that would give them 12 volts but the same capacity. There's a single chip in the middle which drives the motors and remembers which direction it's going. Some miscellaneous resistors, power switch, and some blinking lights to look pretty. Underneath the robot, it has four motors. This sort of defeats the purpose of having a simple robot because motors are usually the most expensive part of any robot project and having four of them makes it an overpriced but very simple robot. Let's take a closer look at how the robot reacts to obstacles. In order to do that, we're going to have to place a rock underneath it so it doesn't drive away while we're experimenting. And power it on. This set of wheels is currently going this direction. This set of wheels is also going this direction, so the robot will go that direction. The switches in front all tell the robot to go this way. The switches in back all tell the robot to go this way. So when it runs into an obstacle, let's say in front, the wheels all change this direction. When it runs into an obstacle in the back, it switches back again. What happens if they're both pressed? It stops. Let's see the robot in action. Need some obstacles to hit. So here's a robot. Here's a pound of wood. Power switch. Why have three obstacle detection switches on each side? If I simply had one in the center, it wouldn't be able to detect collisions on the sides. By having three, it allows it to detect obstacles better. At first you might think having six switches would greatly increase the complexity of the circuitry, but it doesn't. The switches are connected in parallel. Let me give you an example of what that means. Imagine over here we have an electricity source, say plus five volts, or in the case of this robot, plus six volts. And over here we have the chip that wants to detect it. This is all wired together. So this is all the same wire. This is all the same wire. Imagine there were switches here, here, and here. Anytime any one of those switches gets pushed, let's say like it collides with something right over there, the electricity is allowed to flow through and the chip can detect it. Or over here, or in the middle. I guess it'd be like that. Or all three at once. It doesn't matter. That's the great thing about having switches in parallel is the number of wires is still just one over here. Yes, it's split into three parts and one over here and it's split into three parts. But the circuitry is very, very simple. It's just three switches all operating in parallel with each other. If any one of the switches gets connected, then the chip detects it. Why is there a Mark II robot, and why does the Mark II robot have so many motors and so many wheels? The answer lies with the problems encountered with the Mark I robot. This robot has only one motor, right in the center, and it has these slippery wheels. These two wheels are not powered. This one is. Well, let's see what happens when you take a robot with three slippery tires and only one powered wheel. I'll give it an obstacle, pound of wood. And it doesn't have enough traction to click the obstacle detecting switch. Give it another chance. Nope. It also tends to veer off to the side. If we give it a little help, I hope this video inspires you to build your own back and forth style robot. A PCB layout and schematic are available online for free. All the parts are available off the shelf.
So let's see what happens when you have a lightweight robot with only one motor and three slippery wheels. Apparently nothing. <laughs>